trade wars have always failed. Trade wars have always led to bankruptcy and often to war throughout history. Very few people learn the lessons of history. A new silver company for investors, with Keith Newmeyer agreeing to become a major shareholder. Luke Norman, co-founder of Gold Standard Ventures, is the new chairman, and the company has acquired three former First Majestic silver properties. To learn more about this must-own silver stock, go to futuremoneytrends.com slash silver1. That's futuremoneytrends.com slash silver1. Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. We have a new president-elect. Stocks are hitting new highs. Gold is pulling back, and the dollar is hitting highs that it hasn't seen in more than a decade. And to talk to us about all of this, I have on the line Jim Rogers, who's a legendary investor, author, chairman of Rogers Holdings, and Beelin Interests. Uh, Jim Rogers, thanks for coming on the show with me today. Oh, I'm delighted to be here, Kenneth. Sir, as you've put eloquently in the past, we are the most indebted nation in the history of the world, the U.S., that is. And U.S. markets seem to be very optimistic of a Donald Trump's administration. And for that matter, uh, gold is putting the brakes on and uh, the fear trade is washing away. Is this surprising you? Well, uh, it's uh, surprising to me that people are as enthusiastic as they are, given that Mr. Trump says he's going to start trade wars. But at the moment, everybody seems to be focusing on the fact that he's going to cut taxes, which is fabulous, which is great for any economy, and that he's going to build the infrastructure, which America desperately needs. Nobody seems to be focusing on the fact, well, wait a minute, where's the money coming from? First of all, and second of all, how are we going to do all this with trade wars? Mm. So maybe he's modified. Maybe he's not going to start with these disastrous trade wars. Maybe he's just going to do good things. However, Kenneth, in the end, somebody's going to have to say, well, wait a minute. Where are we getting the money? Sure. Maybe we can play this out for another year or two or who knows how long. You know, many people, many people are seeing the trade wars as a good thing in the sense that jobs will be staying in the country. We just got news that Carrier is not going to ship a thousand jobs over to Mexico. They're going to keep that in the U.S. Is that is that positive or are these trade wars overall a negative thing? Well, trade wars are negative until are positive until people start retaliating. If you think that everybody's going to sit and say, "Oh, he just put forty five percent tariffs on us," as he promised he would do with the Chinese, I don't think that people are going to sit sit and say, "Oh, hit me again. This is fun. Let's do more of this." Sure. Uh, the retaliations will come. That one thousand jobs sounds great. Yes. In the end, of course, it makes America less competitive. And and we lose our, our comparative advantage. This that takes a long time, however, to work its way through. Sure, trade wars don't. Trade wars hit you immediately if people retaliate. Mm. Well, and we've been handicapping ourselves many years now with rules and regulations, high minimum wage, unions, you know, benefits to our you know, the employees who work for these corporations and companies want to go elsewhere. And it seems to be the only way to keep jobs within the country. Well, of course it is. You have to compete on the world stage. Carrier sells air conditioners to a lot of places, not just the U.S. And if the U.S. is a high cost place to produce them, people are not going to buy carrier air conditioners. They may buy them in America, but America is a fairly saturated and limited market. Mm. Yeah, people don't understand the the consequences of messing with the free market. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the consequences of implying and not being competitive and then trying to keep those jobs in the country artificially through these trade wars. Well, uh, Mr. Rogers, let's talk about gold now. For the last little while now, people are very optimistic on the U.S. market and Trump, as we've just discussed, and gold is going down. How much downside do you see in gold's future? Well, I'm a terrible market timer. I'm a horrible short-term trader. Uh, I own gold. I've hedged some of my gold. Uh, I expect that if gold gets under $1,000 an ounce, that I, I hope I'm smart enough to buy a lot of gold, because in the end, this is all going to end in a 
a huge mess and a big bubble for gold. Hmm. My my price, uh, Kenneth, to remove my hedges and buy a lot more gold is under one thousand. Hmm. Okay. Well, it, you it may not get there. Ken, it may not get there, Kenneth. Uh, may not get there at all. As I said, I'm pretty bad at market timing. But if it does, I expect to load up. Well, one thing you've done very well at is, you know, and you've recorded, you've been recorded saying this on uh, this show is that U.S. dollars is your largest cash position. And sure enough, the U.S. dollar is stronger today than it's been in more than a decade. And, you know, I, I know you've anticipated this. How long does this go on for? Oh, it's going to go on for a while. The dollar's going to get overpriced. The dollar may even turn into a bubble. One of the reasons for the dollar strength is the turmoil which is, exists in the world and which is going to get worse. When people are afraid, they look for a safe haven. So as the turmoil gets worse, the dollar will go higher. It could even tur turn into a bubble, Kenneth, uh, if the turmoil is bad enough. Well, just like a thousand dollars was uh, a point that you would like to, you know, as a trigger point for your purchasing gold. What is what is your trigger point going to be for the U.S. dollar? When is it going to start looking like a bubble to you? When the dollar index say hits a dollar ten or one ten? Well, one ten certainly doesn't sound like a bubble to me. Uh, I mean, who knows? I'll just have to judge the the circumstances at the time. You know, you you will be able to read the newspapers and everybody will be talking about oh the dollar's going to go up forever you'll see on tv that the dollar is the new is the new promised land uh, people everybody will be pouring into dollars the, i try to judge these things by the mood of what's going on bubbles throughout history everywhere in the world and no matter what the asset always look and sound the same i hope i'm smart enough to recognize it well, interestingly enough, talking about instability, the U.S. interest payment on debt is less today than it was 10 years ago when the total debt was you know, less than 50% of what it is now, simply because interest rates were much higher. And uh, on that note, do you see a repeat of what happened in 2016 when the Fed raised interest rates of December of 2015 into January of 2016, happening again this year with the Fed potentially raising interest rates and restarting this potential bubble going into the next year. The bubble in, in what, in the U.S. dollar? Yes, of course. Well, the you know, the pop in the markets, the volatility. You know, you remember what happened earlier this year, some of the news coming out of China, and uh, that kind of was triggered. Many think it was because of the raising of the interest rates. Of course, they're talking about doing that again here in December. They will do it in December, uh, and it will cause the dollar to go higher. Uh, it, it may well cause bonds to rally for a while because people will say, oh, well, now it's done. They've raised interest rates twice and it's done. And now we can look to better, bigger and better things. That's not the real, what, uh, the real reality because they're going to raise interest rates more next year in the future, or the market is if they don't. But it, it may cause a burst of enthusiasm for a while because everybody say the worst is behind it. Hmm. Well, I know you live in Singapore, uh, Mr. Rogers, and I just want to get your international perspective on what is going on with the establishment, the crumbling of the establishment. Obviously, we saw Trump, an outsider, come in and surprise the mainstream establishment. And I, I'd like to get your opinion on, do you think that the mainstream establishment, the elites, are at risk of losing the control that they have on essentially the world? Well, I hope so. The mainstream establishment or, or somebody has done a pretty bad job on the world right now. We've got all kind of uh, instabilities uh, around the world. Lots of problems around the world. The worry, Kenneth, is, of course, that if the mainstream establishment, which has blown it, it could be replaced by something worse. Yeah. And then we're, re then we're in real serious trouble. Yeah. Over in Asia, Mr. Rogers, do they see Trump as a racist bigot the way the mainstream media have painted him here in the U.S.? 
Well, many people here don't particularly like Trump, but that's based on because they read the mainstream media. Their media is like, like ours. They just repeat what the U.S. and the U.K. say. Uh, so the main view here is that you know now uh, the U.S. is pulling out, a, a, a withdrawing from Asia, and that leaves a gigantic opportunity for China, which China is seizing. You know, the, if, if Trump does what he says, and apparently he is, then that means that there's a gap there's a, a vacuum and that China is moving into it quickly. I, I don't like saying this is bad for, for America, but it's certainly a phenomenal opportunity for China, which they are seizing almost immediately. And you see many countries here already understand that. The Philippines is moving away from the U.S. Other people are trying to figure out, oh, guys, how are we going to do the best for us, which is now China. Uh, Jim, do you see Trump as someone who's going to antagonize other countries and potentially be a hothead which gets the U.S. into the next war? Like the media has been saying he's going to do? He says he's going to antagonize other people. I mean, he's repeatedly sworn that he's going to antagonize other people. I mean, maybe he's a total liar. Maybe he's a fool. Uh, so when do I see it happening? Yeah, I'll take the man at his word, at least at the moment. Now, that kind of thing, <coughs> especially when combined with trade wars, trade wars have always failed. Trade wars have always led to bankruptcy and often to war throughout history. So I, I don't particularly like the fact, but the main problem, Kenneth, is that very, the main lesson of history is that very few people learn the lessons of history. And history shows repeatedly that trade wars lead to bankruptcy. And bankruptcy often leads to war. Now, even the people who understand history sometimes think, well, I, don't worry, it's different this time. I can control history. Mr. Trump certainly thinks he can control history. Uh, the, but the facts are that this is very, very worrisome for the world over the next several years. You should be very worried. Well, that, that's very fascinating analysis and very uh, contrarian to the, the ideas that many people voted tr for Trump for because, you know, the belief is, hey, let's bring these jobs back. Let's bring the money back into this country. But you're saying trade wars net negative for the U.S. and uh, not good for the long term. So, uh, Jim Rogers, thanks so much for coming on the show with me today. My pleasure, Kenneth. Anytime.